Today's subject is one of these, well in fact two of these. A switch mode power supply mains in anything from 100 to 240 volts AC 50 or 60 Hertz, so therefore anywhere in the world. The ones I'm going to use today are 15 volt ones, not in fact this one. This one is a 24 volt 10 watt one and is somewhat bigger than the ones I'm actually going to use. But I've used these things before and I find them really quite good and the fact they're actually made by a named manufacturer that has a website you can visit rather than just some Chinese back garden or something like that. And so far, touch wood, they've, I've found them to be reliable. Now, I do have to point out that I've not been supplied these free of charge and this is, this is not an advertisement. I'm just giving you, as per usual on my channel, my honest opinion of the item. This is the underside and it couldn't be simpler. Mains in and low voltage DC output. These are in fact the ones I'm going to use today and I did mention that they are 15 volts and I'm sure you're asking why have I got two of them? Well I'm going to test these to see whether I can get a plus and minus 15 volts from these. Now in theory it shouldn't be an issue. I, this is the um, DC side and I should be able to just link these two together and get a plus 15 volts, zero and a minus 15 volts on this side. I've just stuck it on this little piece of um, perf board and put a fuse on there for the mains simply because I've got to put them somewhere and this makes it easier to use. This is the underside. The main side is here and I've literally just put them in parallel as you'd expect. Nothing clever and they all go to the fuse. This is the DC, that's one DC, that's the other and I've linked those two together. So we should get that as our naught volts and minus 15 and plus 15. This is ultimately going to be what the little project is and this is a little plastic box which didn't cost a lot of money and if I can not knock the camera over the idea is this is going to go in here and the other item is going to go in here and as you can probably tell this is just a little preamp and I've used these board many times before but originally I was going to run this off batteries because it will work off to 9 volt batteries. But as I want the preamp to have as wide a dynamic range as possible, i.e. it will accept a high input signal equally well, the 5532 actually needs 15 naught 15 or thereabouts. Now, obviously, to get that from batteries would involve um, four batteries. And ironically, these little modules are dirt cheap. They only, they only cost six or seven dollars, New Zealand dollars. And if I run it off batteries, bearing in mind this is going to be on my workbench, it's going to be running all the time I'm in here. So whilst the batteries will last a long time because the current draw on these little modules is about five or six milliamps so very small but those batteries these nine volt batteries they cost almost as much to buy as these modules so i thought i'll run it off the mains this little box that i'm putting it in is too small for a transformer. Admittedly this is a bit bigger than one I would use but I couldn't find any transformer small enough to go in this box. But then I thought to myself this is a switch mode power supply. Is it going to throw muck all over the place? The preamp will become useless. But the good thing about the 5532 
is it has very good power noise rejection built in and I've actually run it in the past uh, mainly just to see if it can be done off unsmoothed DC and it works perfectly well. Anyone that knows me by now knows I like the 5532 but all I'm looking for from this preamp is gain absolutely nothing else and the, this is actually a DC coupled amp as it stands at the moment but I will place a capacitor on the input because as it's going to be used for experiments and things um, my workshop is prone to the odd mistake by yours truly so rather than destroy the amplifier and the preamp by having DC on the input we're going to put a capacitor on it but it will be a good one it won't be an electrolytic other than that the only capacitors on here is a little bit of decoupling in the form of these two electrolytics and it's just a perfectly flat response it I've, I've, I won't talk about it anymore because I've done so in, in numerous videos in the past but it's as simple as this this lead is the input this lead is the output and this lead is the power in and I'm going to use red for plus volts black for zero volts and white for um, minus 15 volts so before I put it all in the case and realize it doesn't work very well with that power supply I'm going to lash it all together and make sure there is no noise coming through to the output and whatever the results are you'll see it on here if it turns out to be a right old mess at least you'll know not to do it but if it works well then it's something you might like to consider using here's my test setup the brown wire and the blue wire are mains coming in and I've actually wired the little module directly to it I'm so full of confidence that I wired it straight away. Now this is going off to my test meter and we've got zero volts in the center here, plus volts on this side and minus volts on that side. When I flick the switch we should have plus 15 volts. Now that's a good sign. No smoke and 15 volts. I'll just switch the test leads over to the other side and we should have minus 15 volts. Right, power on and minus 15 point something volts. So it hasn't gone bang and you clearly can wire two of these in series. I've already checked off camera and there is 30 volts across it. I'm delighted to say it's all working. Now I haven't connected it to my ears yet so I don't know but certainly connected to the scope as you can see and the, the project clips more or less symmetrically it's very slightly more at the bottom so we'll measure the output and I'll try and do a signal to noise ratio um, it's not always easy on here because I've got so much stuff with switch mode power supplies in it, including my computer, that um, getting meaningful noise figures is, is quite hard. But we'll have a go. Out of curiosity, I thought I'd show you what the peak output is. Well, actually, it's not the peak. It's the RMS value. And we are on the 10-volt scale, so we've got about... 9 volts RMS coming out from that little preamp uh, just prior to clipping. So that's pretty good with uh, a plus and minus 15 volts. Quite happy about that. So the chances of you overloading anything is pretty slim, I would think. An RMS input to the preamp of what range are we on? The 1 volt range. Um, 900 millivolts in for 9 volts out. Well, I don't think you need me to calculate that for you to see what the gain is. Well, you may be shocked to know that 500 millivolts in
gives you five volts output. So that little preamp will literally drive any amplifier. Thinking that you've got an average output from a telephone or something is going to be 200 millivolts or something like that. You can see that just that single stage is giving you all that gain. Anyway, back to the drawing board. Let's have a look at the noise. I'm trying to get you a noise figure now, um, and I don't think I can meaningfully do so. I've got the amplifier or the pre-amplifier inputs shorted together, so um, there's no signal coming in other than six inches of cable uh, with a short on the input. The power is on, and the meter is on the one millivolt scale which is the top scale. So as you can see, the noise level is about 0.6 of a millivolt. And any power supply noise is buried in that noise. I just can't, there's just nothing there to see other than the standard mess I get from this room. So what I'm going to do now, forget about test equipment, I'm going to plug it into the amplifier and see if I can hear it. If I can hear it, it's no good, is it? Doesn't matter what the figures are, if you can hear it, it's no good. These little preamp boards that I've talked about many times before, I think going back three years when I last tested one of these, I pointed out that it had a design fault on it. And the design fault is there's a capacitor in the feedback loop which is the wrong value. And I can't believe I'm telling you this, but these particular boards I picked up about three months ago and they're the, the latest design and they still have the same fault. Now, for, for once I'm actually lost for words that no one's contacted the manufacturers. Well, to, to be honest, they're not manufacturers, they're just some guy that's got, got a small factory and he's chucking these out by the million, never testing them. And that's why they, they come. But I'm going to show you this because I'm sure you think I'm making this up. Have a look at this. At the moment, let me just turn my fan off. It's making a racket. It's rather hot today. We're looking at the dB scale here and I'm running through at two kilohertz and we call that naught dB. Below that it's just flat to DC so point is showing it to you. So I'm going to up the frequency now and you'll see it's starting to roll off and that's one dB down at 15 kilohertz which is not very good is it? And if I keep going to 2 dB that's 22 kilohertz. Now, for some products, that would be fairly good for a valve amplifier. But for this, it's appalling. And it's purely because it's been made wrongly. Well, I'm going to hack out the offending capacitor now and show you the same test again. Right, well, I've removed the offending capacitors and I've left off exactly or I should say I've resumed exactly where I left, left the test before. And as you can see, we're still at 22 kilohertz and we're back to 0 dB. And it just mystifies me. Let's just see how far we can go now. Oh dear, this could take some time. We'll go to 1 dB down. No, we'll go to half a dB. And that is 64 kilohertz, which is what you'd expect from this chip. I won't go any further because I don't know about you, but I can't hear that frequency. I know that's a shock, but it's true. So there we are. They're still turning out the same crap with the same problem as they did three years ago. The offending capacitors. Pretty small. And this is where they came from. If you look at the chip, where the screwdriver is, that was where the capacitor sat. And 
being a lazy sod, I haven't unsoldered it. I just got my screwdriver and ripped it off. Such is my contempt for this product. And the other side, exactly the same. So if you've got these boards and you don't want to have the HF rolling off like that, and I should point out that it's completely stable. There's no hint of instability or oscillation. But that's what you need to do. Is the, the two capacitors nearest the chip don't know what the value is, but from part pri uh, previous experience, it's they've been fitting 220 picofarad, and it should be if you really want to put one in there, it should be 22. But obviously, with these chips being so small, I can't I can't measure them because I can uh, I can only just pick them up. So that's what the problem is, and apart from that. That is a stunning board. DC coupled, lots of gain, very low noise. And the point of the, all this video is that's what I'm going to do in that little box I showed you. Now that I'm convinced this switch mode um, little power supply modules will work, and they do work, and needless to say, they are stone, stone cold because the current draw is five or six milliamps i haven't measured it but i have i have done in the past so that's what i'm going to do now i'm going to build it up into that little box with some socketry and um i might show you might not it depends if you want to see it let me know